very, very sunny London today. As you can see, I am sat in a park in near Hackney Central, which is a borough in London. Um, interestingly, a park last year would have been one of the only places advised by the government for members of the public to be able to go exercise, to socialise at a safe distance back when lockdown restrictions were toughest in the UK. Obviously that's changed now. We've had our Freedom Day, as Prime Minister Boris Johnson called it, as the government called it, and there still remains quite a lot of confusion over government message, over what exactly can or you can or can't do as a member of the public on public transport, in shops. It's all a little bit still up in the air, as many would expect in such a strange time as this pandemic. Now, for example, one of the main things still remains over this, the face mask. To wear or not to wear, well, there's been a lot on that recently, and we'll see that as we continue this, this vlog today. We're looking to go down the high streets, so we'll see how that's doing. Um, and from my own experience, it's all pretty much normal. What really remains the level of confusion for many people in the UK is, again, on the mask wearing, and what exactly you should do legally or whether you should listen to the bylaws that are in place in various shops in various restaurants what exactly happens there so we will be looking at that as you can see now it's quite a chilled day here down at the park so what we're going to do is we're going to leave this park now and we're going to take a tour through london while also talking about some of the concerns the curiosities but also some of the plans that the uk government has in store for the population for Boris Johnson's roadmap out of lockdown. Now, before you look at how the UK has opened up, the bigger question, the pertinent question compared to other countries is how has the UK been able to open up? And it's no, it's no hidden headline that the success of the vaccination programme has allowed the UK to open up. But, it's also come under some increasing pressure from scientists who think that actually, even with a successful vaccination programme, there's more time should be done to wait to let, keep restrictions in place for longer. Still, in my conversations with scientists, with, with, with virologists on the matter, many seem focused first off the point at how successful the vaccination programme has been, because it has been incredibly successful. But looking at, in a wider context, how actually the easing of restrictions could be of detriment in the long term to the UK. And that is through the idea that we saw in India with the rise of the Delta variant. The reason the Delta variant came about in the first place was because of these increasing cases. The increase of cases meant there's a highly higher chance that a variant would emerge. As you can see, as we see in a second, London is open, the UK is open, it's had its Freedom Day, but many are questioning how long that Freedom Day will last if the government will go back on what it said before, on the fact that restrictions are eased. So as you can see, shops are now open as we walk down the high street here. You'll see the people still sticking to the outside door rules, mainly because it is sunny outside. Despite restrictions being eased, people are still people are still sticking to those pre pre Freedom Day rules. Mainly because people are worried. Like I say, there is that split. There is that split down the middle. These face masks and they've become a sort of a symbol of if you wear one, you believe that the coronavirus is a health concern to the country. If you don't, then you don't believe it. And that's sort of become one of the ambient, one of the natural discourse talking points now of both sides. And it's interesting you talk about, when we talk about how the UK opened up, mainly due to its success in its vaccination programme. But it also is key to look at why the UK opened up and the rhetoric around UK opening up and many experts are linking it to a sort of post-Brexit populist agenda which again is problematic in itself 
the UK government will are uh, trying to reassure the public that this was based solely on data, on key data that the UK could open up due to its vaccination program, due to the level of cases being manageable. As we just try and cross the road, see more. There are also more cars than there ever used to be on the road. When lockdown happened last year, you could walk through the streets of London, but now, as you can see, traffic is all coming back. And how fitting an ambulance just going by, living in Hackney here by the hospital. You do get a lot of that. I've noticed a lot of it recently. Whether that's directly linked to the rise of cases and hospitalizations, we don't know. The UK has been seen by many countries from the outside as being relatively selfish in its way of the vaccine. Two doses, there was first, it was, it was said, well, why don't, instead of trying to double vaccinate or even triple vaccinate people, why don't you look to to other countries to help them with their own supply? But the UK went ahead, steam rolled ahead with its own vaccine rollout plan. What's happened is what many people were concerned about when the UK went forth with Brexit, when the UK left the European Union, is that we'd find this more isolated, this more not free thinking UK, but sort of a UK that didn't look to collaborate, didn't look to help other countries. And that is what some people, opinion on the ground anyway, people I've spoken to, are saying about opening up. So, once again, we're faced with that uncertainty, the uncertainty of how the world views us from the outside. As looking in, you can, as you can see, we're just walking around, people are around again. People are returning to the streets and people are returning back into shops, into restaurants. People are enjoying themselves and that's, to many, that, that is a good thing. But when you see, for example, on the 19th of July, on Freedom Day, on Freedom Night, on the eve of Freedom Day, sorry, you saw nightclubs packed with people who had pre-booked tickets pack nightclubs, no social distancing restrictions. And online, when that was shared online, there was a lot of animosity. There was a lot of criticism of people who had visited the nightclub. So whether that could have been predicted before, this animosity, this divide in people, no one knows, but it's one thing that the pandemic, that it has highlighted. Obviously children now have gone on holiday, half term as you walk through a school now. Children have gone on half term. One of the main concerns of the coronavirus when in the early days was the spread through children. Whether that's going to be, whether that's going to affect cases, whether that's going to increase hospitalizations. So there's still an element, a lot of uncertainty around what exactly it means for, for the UK going forward. That now these streets are filled with people, some wearing masks, some not. Again, as I said earlier, masks have become a contentious point. But for now, days after Freedom Day, life has pretty much returned to normal. But there still is the anxiety from the public towards this, towards normality. You know, many people have been used to working from home, have been used to what life was like in lockdown so there is a lot of social anxiety out there as well people looking to return to whatever normality is the new normal sorry as we just cross the road now as you see london transport so this walk probably the best way to see the streets here without going too close without going to close to the crowd and you can see the shops to my right are now opening traffic is returning buses, public transport, people using them without the restrictions. And as we walk, you see, so I hope that's given you an insight into how London has reopened, into how the UK has reopened, into the differences it's had, not a lot, not a lot of differences. Many people would have said that the restrictions, the last stage of restrictions, the one before Freedom Day, were enough they felt that that allowed enough i mean 
many young people who were just finished university who we've spoken to obviously were unhappy that full restrictions weren't eased mainly due to loneliness there was a lot of cases of rise of mental depression all of that so what it's really caused again is this rift is this different ideology of how the UK should exit something of this kind now as I walk to actually what was during in the peak of the pandemic one of the churches that offered COVID relief that offered help for people who were finding themselves in depression so as you can see there are always two sides to this there are two sides two nice and deeply rifted sides in the pandemic due to the pandemic due to thoughts on how best to deal with a pandemic but perhaps freedom day for many of those who have been affected by who have been affected by the coronavirus whether they've lost loved ones whether they've lost a bit of themselves through it whether they've lost their job which has been a huge thing and we'll see how that impacts the, the the impacts that will have further down the line a lot of pigeons <laughs> there we go just the priest here as the uk now enjoys its freedoms there are still the main questions of how long for how long will it last and what will be the long term the long term issues that are faced with the coronavirus pandemic with restrictions could we see a crippled, crippled economy that lasts for a long time for no jobs for young people it's all these concerns that keep everything up in the air but will end on quite a poignant image of one of the churches that offered relief and brought people together through the pandemic well hello from a very very 